Hey, what's up guys? My name is Spencer Stanley and I'm a filmmaker here in Canada. Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate the Super 8 film look in your digital camera, whatever you have. Push me out to sea, baby. It's the best thing for us both. is becoming super popular and trendy right now and it's kind of been on the upswing for a while and I've noticed in video particularly in the last year or so a lot of people are trying to recreate that super 8 film look it's actually coming into commercial work music video work a lot of stuff like that and I found that I really like using it in my short films my kind of just fun Instagram edits um, to kind of give an older aesthetic to the film so super 8 cameras became kind of popular back in the 70s as every dad kind of wanted to capture his memories on video. And they were these super cool kind of point and shoot uh, eight millimeter film recorders. They'd shoot in about 18 frames per second and they gave a really pleasing aesthetic due to the film nature of it. So they captured the highlights really well and they gave like a cool color, super grainy, super old school. And that's becoming super popular nowadays. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say super, but probably a lot. So shooting film has become really popular over the years as film cameras, 35 millimeter has come kind of back into vogue. Um, we're seeing retrovation with a lot of these old analog things like cameras. Um, people are getting too used to the over-processed like digital image and they kind of want to go back to that old pleasing aesthetic. Now, how do you shoot it? I'm going to tell you kind of like the basic principles of what you want to do when you're actually shooting to emulate film. But I think if you have old film that you want to emulate right now, you can still do that and it'll still look good. Uh, it might not look as like traditional as it should, but who cares? So one of the biggest things is you want a lot of camera shake, not like a lot where it's annoying to see, but some like really good, subtle handheld camera shake, maybe some zooms because Super 8 cameras had zooms and dads love zooming in on things for some reason. So it adds to that aesthetic as well. You also wanna shoot in a pretty flat picture profile. So I'm shooting on the A7R Mark III. I like to shoot in Cine 4 and then do some post-production work to the color grading afterwards. The whole point of Super 8 is kind of making your film look shittier in an aesthetic way. It's really weird, but we all love it for some reason. Now the thing that I, I don't love and is hard for me to do when I'm shooting is uh, you can't really use a shallow depth of field because these old cameras did not really produce a shallow depth of field at all. So typically you wanna shoot around F8, F9. Hopefully you have some good natural light. I typically don't even think about this. I just shoot and then I'll kind of look at the clips that I have and see what might work to be emulated and then just throw it in as a little part of the video. But if you really wanna get that vintage look, you have to shoot in a uh, F8 or F9 higher aperture. We're gonna posturize the time so it looks like we're shooting in 18 frames per second because that's what these Super 8 cameras look or did. But whatever footage you have, if you wanna make it look old, try it. I'm sure it'll still look great. So don't focus too much on kind of, you know, what you're shooting in camera. I think the biggest thing for me would be the handheld movement. You don't wanna be using like gimbal shots or, or anything like super steady because it's just not gonna, it's not gonna look natural with the film. I've done it before and it still looked kinda of cool, but it's not, it, it doesn't really recreate what we're going for. So let's hop onto my computer and we're gonna talk about the post-production process of making this Super 8 look. Okay, we're now in, Adobe Premiere, and I'm gonna show you guys how you can overlay um, this Super 8 effect onto your footage. So I've, uh, I've taken my footage here uh, from my project bin. It's a 4K timeline. Um, if you wanna do that, all you gotta do is take your footage from the bin. Oop, I don't even know what I'm doing. Scoop it over here. Um, and then I've cut it to some music here to make it more enjoyable for all of you. Um, and basically the way I do that, quick little tip is, I go like this and then I hit M on every beat change and then I just sync up the footage to that. So I'm gonna delete this. There's a couple different free things that you can do to get the Super 8 look in your footage. Um, I personally went with Ezra Cohen's Dirty Letterboxes. I'll link them below. I think they're a little expensive, I'm not gonna lie, but they're the highest quality ones um, that I've seen on the internet. I've seen other ones that I almost bought, but these ones just, they kind of work the best in my opinion. I paid like 50 bucks for them, something like that. A little expensive uh, for really what you're getting. But um, I'm gonna show you a free way to, let's go here. So you wanna right click, you're gonna go uh, adjustment layer and then you're gonna rip this adjustment layer right over your footage. Um, and then to get that four by three aspect ratio, all we're gonna do is go into our effects, search up crop and throw this crop right on the adjustment layer. And then you're gonna go into your effect controls 
uh, left side is gonna be 13% and right side is gonna be 13%. And this is gonna give you, oh, what am I doing, 3%. Um, this is gonna give you that exact same four by three effect. It's just a little less dirty looking. Um, when I say dirty, I'll show you the uh, four by three letter box, the dirty frame that I'm gonna use here by Ezra Cohen. Um, so you're gonna throw this on, on top of your stuff. And uh, you're gonna go to the opacity and blend mode. And I find darken works best because it doesn't really affect my footage. And these are the exact same uh, size, but you just get these artifacts um, from that, which is really good. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna take out this crop and I'm gonna keep this adjustment layer for my color grade. Now, um, Ezra Cohen also in this dirty letter boxes, this is what you get here. Uh, he has film perforations, which I think look really good. I like this one, the eight millimeter uh, perforation. Obviously we're doing eight millimeter film, so it makes the most sense. So you just throw that on there and it looks good as is. Um, and it just kind of adds like a nice little, nice little thing. Okay, so I rendered everything out here and it looks pretty good so far, but it doesn't have that kind of grainy, um, uh, unsharp aesthetic that Super 8 produces. So we're also going to want to add some grain to this. So I'm gonna go back into uh, the dirty letter boxes and he gives us some grain with this. Um, if you wanna find some online, just type, search free grain, I, I, I found grain before. You want something a bit more coarse because Super 8 cameras uh, used a more coarse grain. So you're just gonna put it over top again, like we did before. Um, and we're gonna overlay this. And it actually doesn't look that bad at 100%, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna bring it down to like around 80-ish, maybe 70. I don't want this to, to, to ruin the picture of the film. That looks pretty good. I like that. So I'm just gonna hold Alt and uh, move this over here. And I'm gonna have to do this again just because it's a short, uh, short overlay. So now we have our overlays and it's looking pretty good. Um, there's a couple things that we have to do to make it look super eight. And I recorded this tutorial once already and forgot about it. So one thing is we want to posturize our time. So super eight cameras filmed in, I think nine and 18 frames per second, but 18 frames per second was the norm. Cause that was the closest to what your human eye captures. Um, these are all shot in 24 frames per second. So it looks a little unrealistic if we're going for that, um, that super eight look. So we're going to take posturized time, going to throw it on this clip. Um, and now we're gonna look into our effects controls. Oh, see, I already did it. Look, I already did it earlier by accident. Um, anyways, so let's delete this one. Pretend it just wasn't there, you know? So it's gonna have 24 frames because that's how many frames per second it was shot at. So if we wanna change this, we just go 18. And uh, you just throw this on every clip and do the same thing. And then you'll be at uh, 18 frames per second with every clip like you see here in the effects control. Um, you could also copy and then paste the attributes, which is a lot quicker. Okay, I noticed that I color graded these earlier and forgot to delete them. So I deleted the color grade on these photos. Um, what I'm gonna do is I color grade each clip individually and then I throw an adjustment layer on for the overall color and kind of aesthetic of it. So I wanna go through each of these clips individually and see how much they really emulate that uh, Super 8 look. So we're gonna open Lumetri Color and this one looks pretty good to me. I don't think I have to tweak this that much. Um, looks pretty good. This one's very similar. The one thing that we wanna um, try and do is kill the highlights. Like this one looks fine, but if you go to this clip right here, you can see that it's really uh, not clipping the highlights, but they're, they're almost blown out. So we wanna take those highlights and that's why it's good to shoot in a log profile. So we have more um, room and post to, to bring these down. And that's gonna look a little bit more like what a Super 8 would because film really captured highlights a little bit better. Uh, Super 8 wasn't the best. I mean, it's not some RE film camera, but I think it looks more realistic. Like this looks really good here already. And then, so I don't like to, to adjust the colors too much here, um, but uh, what I will do is I'll go to creative. You can add a bit of the faded film look. Um, I like to just crush my blacks when it comes to the curves, which I'll show you. Uh, I would add like a bit of vibrance just cause I shot in Cine 4. That looks about good. Go to my curves now. I don't want this to be overly contrasty, but I'm still gonna throw an S curve on and then crush the black. So we're gonna pull our shadows down, our highlights up a little bit. This 
probably unnecessary and it's making it look better than it needs to, but it's just like one of those things that I can't not do. It's like shooting at a low aperture. Um, you could kind of desaturate a little bit here. Uh, this is all personal preference and that's what this is gonna come down to when doing uh, your color grid. Um, but I wanna go back up to these curves here. I wanna hit red. Now, there are you know certain film stocks that did different colors here, but I think just kind of playing with this and seeing what looks cool to your eyes, like just what gives off a film look by kind of putting like slight S curves on these is, is a cool way to do it. And I've just done different ones every time and I'm generally pretty happy with how they turned out because it just messes with the highlights and the shadows a bit. It looks a little purpley actually, I don't like that. That's better. Um, what else do I wanna do? And then I usually just add a little bit of blue into the shadows. And then the midtones kind of bring them up a little bit. And I like the way this is looking. Uh, I'm not gonna add a vignette. The only thing I would do is maybe uh, de-sharpen it just slightly, ever so slightly. Like minus one, see how that looks. And then we're looking pretty good. Um, time's posturized. So I'm happy with this, how this is looking. The other one thing that I might add is some different color burns uh, to the film. Uh, I, this is just like kind of an aesthetic that I really like. So I would add these under here and then you could just add like the odd one and then go and do effect controls, overlay. Actually, I wanna do lighten. And it just kind of adds like a little, a little film burn to the right side, see there? So if you see this. I think that looks pretty good. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you recreate that Super 8 look. If you want to watch more videos like this, subscribe. I'm going to be making a lot more in the near future. My name's been Spencer, my name's been Spencer Stanley, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.